That's good. Right, okay, so uh, are we all here? Anybody not here? No. Oh, that's, had a cup of coffee, a cup of tea. Marvellous. Uh, let me know if this is a bit loud. Is it a bit loud? Hard to judge. I'll, I'll turn it down a little bit. If you can't hear me, then just shout, wave your arms a little bit, and I will hear the speaker. Uh, but uh, let me start with a little introduction. Hello! Hello! There you go. Uh, my name's David Howie. I'm a full-time professional photographer and photographic educator. And it's really nice to be asked to come and speak to you all today. Uh, I've got two talks. They've let me speak twice. Mad fools. Uh, two. One this morning, and then I get the graveyard shift at the end. So please stick around for that. Otherwise, it'll just be me. That's enough. I'm quite happy. So uh, the first talk this morning is wait it, shoot it, edit. Uh, I will be lighting stuff shooting stuff and editing. The clue's in the title, really. I don't, I don't really go for uh, complex titles. It is what it is. So for, for those that don't know what I do, I, I'm a portrait photographer, mostly based in a studio environment. I'm very lucky. I have a small studio at the end of my garden. It's a little log cabin, and it is really small. I'll talk a bit more about that in the second uh, talk this afternoon. Uh, but what I'm going to cover in my session uh, here is we're going to kick off with a little bit of my Perfect, I should have put that in inverted commas, colour workflow. Uh, then we're going to get into the exciting bits where we get to do some simple lighting. I will try and keep it reasonably simple to kick off with. And then there'll be a little bit of post-processing in there as well. So, not too much, but I'll try and mix it up so you get a little bit of everything during my 45-50 minutes of speaking. So let's kick off with the, the perfect colour workflow. Let's get the exciting stuff out of the way whilst you're still away from the coffee. Because it can seem like a really dry subject, but it's absolutely critical. It's really, really important. And for me, it's a three-step process. Arguably four. But three or four-step process. And it kicks off really simply, in my view, with step number one, which is your monitor. Or specifically, my monitor. So my way of thinking is, it doesn't matter what you photograph, whether you're landscapes, and I know we've got some landscape photographers, whether you're a portrait photographer, whatever you do, you have to be looking at something that is correct, otherwise you're just guessing. I spent a lot of my photography career guessing, and every week I guessed differently, and it showed. So monitors are really important. I've had a lot of monitors in my photography career. My, my digital era goes back to the, uh, the late 90s, and before that, I was a darkroom worker, so I got sort of a lot of, of experience with the colour and the random nature of colour. My current monitor of choice, and I think for quite some time because it's amazing, is the BenQ. So this is what I'm currently staring at every single day. Yeah, my life's that exciting. <laughs> every day I'm looking at BenQ SW2700PT. The SW ranges for the photographers amongst us. And it is fantastic. It really is a brilliant little monitor. It comes in at a whopping 27 inches. Now, I've only got a small studio. That fills my desk. It's fantastic. My old monitor that it replaced was 24 inches. I didn't even make much difference. I'm not going to go into that area, but it makes a difference. Okay, yes, it really does. For those that like the geeky stuff, that's not me. That's probably Sanjay. You'll like this when you're geek. Yeah. You're off. Yeah. Resolution. The resolution on this one is 25, 60 by 1440. Put it another way, my old monitor was HD, 1080 high and 1920 across. This is a bigger monitor with a bigger resolution, but it's not one of these modern 4K jobs where the writing gets so small that people of my age, I'm getting closer to 50, uh, find it trickier to read. And as a Windows user, not all of my programs scale very well. So this has worked out as a great little balance. And it's also got a coverage of 99% of Adobe RGB. Right, if I say that, how many of you understand what I say when I say 99% of Adobe RGB? Okay, I can just skip that then, yeah? It's perfect. <laughs> this is where I, I get confused, because this gets complicated. When I started in digital imaging, I asked a better photographer than me what this all meant. And I was told this. So sRGB has less colours than Adobe RGB, which has less colours than ProPhoto RGB. That's wrong. It's not true. It has the same number of colours, they're just spread out over a wider area. 
So if you need the widest spread of colours and you know what you're doing with your workflow, then maybe that's right for you. Me, I shoot in sRGB and this one is going to show me everything within the sRGB colour space. All of my work is online, I don't print anything. If you want to find out more about this stuff, go ask the experts at the back. So here's me actually using the monitor. It's not just a picture, I actually genuinely use this stuff. So this is me sat in my desk making a, a video. This is a, a stills from one of my videos. I make videos for a company called Adorama out in the States. Uh, rarely go out there, but they're a fantastic company. And I get to sit in front of my computer doing this sort of stuff. There's three things I really liked about the, the BenQ monitor. The, the, the whole kind of technology was great, but it came with a free, included in the box, little shield thing around the outside. That's two jobs. First job is it cuts out the, uh, the flare from my terrible lighting, because my lighting is set for video so I can be recorded. I'm, I'm that self-centered. <laughs> uh, it also looks awesome. <laughs> People come into my studio and go, wow, that must be a good monitor. Yeah, if you think, yeah. It's so, um, it, it, yeah, it, it impresses people, which is nice. It gets you off to a good start when you've got customers and clients coming in. Yeah, he knows his stuff. But the thing that really, I didn't know at the time when I got it, the thing that I've really loved is, it's a little out of focus, but just here, a couple of USB 3 sockets and an SD card reader. It's the little things that make a massive difference to my life. I can't tell you how much better that's been. Just think, I think I've cut on half a stone through less walking back to my card reader every day, so that's been brilliant. So a whole bunch of reasons why I like it. Uh, to actually get the colours right, it comes out of the box pretty good, but you still need to calibrate. All of the other monitors I've owned have been calibrated, I've had various calibrators over the years. Uh, the one I use currently is the x i i1, and it's really good. It just works. If it's more complicated than that, I am not going to use it. I stick it on once a month, have a cup of tea, come back ten minutes later, and it's done. And that's it. Now I'd love to tell you that every time I do it, when San Jose, you get, you get a colour shift, you need a BenQ monitor, because mine never shifts. Honestly, I do it and I finish it and I think, well, it's the same. <laughs> but I do it really just anyway, and I think that's just good practice to do, because it probably is shifting. I'm just you know, too busy having a cup of tea and uh, watching online YouTube videos on my other monitor. So uh, that's what I do. That's kind of my, my colour workflow on my monitor. Uh, out of interest, how many of you actually calibrate your monitor? A little show of hands. How many of you currently calibrate your monitor? Brilliant. How many of you have never calibrated your monitor? I won't pick on you, I'm just genuinely interested. Darren, I'm disappointed in you at the back. <laughs> I'm going to pick on Darren because he should know better. Okay, that's, that's really interesting. So about half and half. Honestly, I was in the last boat for quite a number of years, and that was my first stage actually calibrating things that made a difference to my workflow. So if you've never done it, uh, it it's, it's something that is worth looking into, and I would strongly recommend it. Okay, step two is my camera. I've got my monitor looking good, now I need my camera to show you good colours. My camera is going to have a custom white balance set into it. Uh, so uh, this is a shot I take quite regularly. Honestly, I didn't ask the model to do that. My assistants do that as well. I'm not even saying about models as well. Yeah, I handed the card and said, I'm just going to take a close-up shot of this. Uh, I took a wide one, so I knew I'd need one for the presentation. And when I got home, she done that. I was clearly having a bad day. <laughs> so uh, that's done. So I always take a, a custom white balance, which is a close up of the colour checker passport, and I'll demonstrate this live in a little bit. Uh, you can use a colour checker passport like this. Now, if you don't want to use a colour checker passport, there is another option. All you need to do is buy a grey airplane. <laughs> If you've got a grey airplane, your problem is solved. Just land it where you want your colours to be right, click, you're done. Um, that's, that's, it doesn't have to be an extra grey airplane. And step number three is then my images. So I've got my monitor, I've got my camera, my images now need to be colour corrected. Um, I do work with the best models, I really genuinely do. <laughs> and they're fantastic. So I will always take a picture of my colour checker passport, and I'll use this to either create a, a custom profile or at least fine-tune the white balance. Before I did this, I would use the Adobe standard colour space, which if you've no idea what I've just said, is what you're using. Okay? And it looks pretty good until you actually go and actually calibrate your own camera and your own lenses and your own lighting. So what I want to draw your attention to is the blue up here and the red down here. 
The next image I'm going to show you is absolutely the same. No editing done whatsoever other than setting a colour profile that I made from the colour checker passport. Did you spot the difference? Have a look at those reds, especially on that right hand side. Okay? Massive difference to the colour. Now, we're viewing this on a projector that isn't colour calibrated. Nonetheless, we can see a huge difference in the reds. And that is zero work for me. That is exactly the image that came through my system and it, uh, before and after. Now, if I hadn't set a custom white balance, this is what I would have shot. If your images look a bit of a funny colour, this is what's happening. Okay, so ultimately, this is the camera doing its own thing, and this is me just doing a little tiny bit of work. The less work I can do when I get back to my computer, the better. I've got better things to do with my life than sit in front of Photoshop. So those are my three steps. Monitor camera images. The fourth step is purely optional, and it's one that I've taken advantage of, and that's to ask an expert. Because this stuff is not my area of expertise. I'm a user not an expert. So if you need to ask the experts, they're at the back, and their expertise doesn't finish when you leave the door. They're always there to help. I mean, they, they will just help you with the colour, they won't help you with relationships or personal finance. We had a lot of those. Uh, but they are there to help, and there's a wonderful uh, little company back there, Colour Confidence are superb. They've got me out of the hole already, uh, very recently. Anyway, that's enough about that. Let's get on to some actual shooting, because fun as that is, it's way more fun to take some pictures. So, uh, to make this work, I need to set a few things up. So let me just come out of here, and uh, close that down, and then hopefully we can get a camera switched on. Uh, now, we've got some people on lights. Can you pop the lights back on just for me? Thank you, Peter. Much appreciated. Oh, noises. That's fun. Okay, so uh, to make this work, I need a couple of things. I need some lights, and we'll talk about lights in just a moment. But more importantly, I need a model. So, Jane, can you give Jane a round of applause? Hi, Jane. Okay, have a seat. So, I'm going to kick off with my kind of workflow, the way I tend to do these things just to, to set everything up. Yeah, it goes quick. It's not new, it's a broken chair. It's, it's kind of fine. <laughs> yeah, well done. Yeah, oh, it's also very uncomfortable. It reflects in the face, it'll be, it'll be fine. So we're going to set up a really simple lighting scenario. The sort of lighting scenario that I would do for a corporate client. Now, I used to do endless corporate photography. It paid really well, but it was soulless. Um, and I'm lucky now I don't have to do that, I can sort of do other things. But corporate photography is just one of those things that we do. Now if you watch people's social media, no one does corporate photography. Nobody talks about it, it's really boring. And yet it's a really big thing, you can get some decent uh, expenses off of that. So I highly recommend going for this sort of photography. Uh, and it's going to be in a similar vein to Sanjay's, but with my own personal little twist. So first things first, I need to get some light set, I need to get my camera to work, and I need to get a picture on the screen. So I could just use ambient light. Let's pretend that the ambient light is absolutely perfect. And let's just see what we get. Okay, Jane, here we go. The best picture of the day coming up on you right now. Here it comes. Let's see if it works. It's always a scary moment. <laughs> Will it work? I don't rely. I, I got wires, Sandia. There's no way I'm doing wires, mate. Honestly, you're so brave. <laughs> so brave. <laughs> okay, so it works. So uh, thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, I'll quit now. That's it. <laughs> okay, that's that's not good, Jane. Look at that. That's that's. <laughs> I've got to do better than that. If I don't do better than that, I've wasted my time and your time. Okay, so let's see if we can do it a little bit better. First thing I need to do is to switch off of auto mode and switch into manual mode. Then I'm going to set my camera up for my flash settings. Now I go with a system of, of similar settings that always work. That was a bold statement. Uh, I'm going to go with a shutter speed of 250th of a second. That's the flash sync speed for my Olympus camera. I'm shooting Olympus, by the way. Uh, I'm going to go for an aperture of f, let's go for f8, middle of the road, and ISO 200, the native ISO for Olympus cameras. So if I take a picture with those settings but no flash, let's see what we get. Here we go, Jane. Marvellous. I think you'll agree, I've improved the picture. <laughs> so one of two things has happened. Either I've broken my camera, and that's a real possibility. If you're going to do things live, that's when stuff goes wrong. Or we've really, really underexposed the picture and now none of these room lights can be seen. I'm hoping it's the latter. Right. 
So, how many of you have got a flash meter? A few, brilliant. Out of interest, is there anybody who won't put their hand up no matter what they ask? So <laughs> 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 <Draw> a few. <laughs> okay, fine. So, a few of you have, most of you haven't. Let's do this by trial and error, so we can sort of get everybody on board. So, I'm going to put a flash. Uh, I'm going to be using the Rogue flash benders. This is my favourite one. Uh, the, the Pro XL is a fantastic little thing. It's really small, it's really portable, and because I destroy things, it's almost indestructible. Almost. I'm working on it. I'll get it broken. Okay, so uh, let's get that into the shot nice and close. We'll put it the flash around about, let's go for a quarter power, let's go for an eighth power, why not? Let's try that, and we'll take a little test shot and just see how this looks. Okay, so quick question, too bright or too dark? I think so. How many stops too bright? As a rough guess. Two? Okay, so if I'm on one eighth power, I want to bring this down two stops. One eighth to one sixteenth power, that's one stop. One thirty, uh, sixteenth to one thirty second, or one thirty tooth. Two stops. Okay, Jane, here we go. Let's just take another shot like that. Marvellous. Okay, that's two stops less. Now, your screen and my screen are looking uh, a little bit different. Actually, it doesn't look too bad on yours, so we'll, we'll judge the one that you're looking at. Uh, for mine, it's you know, perhaps just a touch under. But once I've got my exposure about right, I'm then going to do my first bit of calibration. So, I shall get my colour checker passport, which you'll notice attached to my uh, my light meter, because I use my light meter, it goes everywhere with me, so does the color checker passport. It's kind of simple. So there's two bits of the color checker passport. There's a grey bit and a colouring bit. We're going to go with the grey bit. So, okay, what you're going to do, you're going to hold that just there, like that, in front of your face. Marvellous. And the rest that on your leg, like that. And I'm going to take a close-up, filling the screen of that. Okay, now, uh, how you do this varies from camera to camera. On my Olympus camera, I'm going to set a custom white balance for my camera by pressing the one touch white balance button. Uh, if you can just take fingers out of the way for me, thank you. And I'm coming really uncomfortably close. I'm only photographing the car, Jane, it's okay. And I'm going to photograph, whoops, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> the picture of the floor coming, I suspect. Uh, no, I was probably still holding the. Oh yeah, oh, uh, I got lucky. <laughs> I got lucky. So uh, it won't pop on the screen because it is a one touch white balance. It's a picture, thank you, Jane, uh, for me and my camera. Um, that, that should now set the white balance a little bit better. Let's take the same shot again. Here we go. Okay, well, that's close up. I'm going to go a little bit further back. I think I am standing so close to the screen that I'm seeing it a little bit weird. Okay, but that should be a warmer tone than it was before, it was a little bit grey before, a little bit bluish. So that gives me a little bit of confidence that the colours I'm seeing in my camera are closer to reality. Uh, if you've got mirrors like I have, then you'll know that the electronic viewfinder gives you a white balance from the room lights. But my flash is a different white balance. So when I'm looking through the viewfinder, everything is sort of a greeny, yellowy colour, it's quite horrible. I've got to understand that if I set a custom white balance, I then get pictures that are much better in colour. Okay, so that's great. That's, uh, that's that bit. Let's get something a little bit more interesting going on, because we can get some better lighting going on here. Let's get this nice and close, and we'll set my little corporate -y type headshot up. Lovely. Marvellous. If I move it closer, I just need to drop the power down slightly. I like my light to be as close to my subject as I can reasonably get it. Okay, that's terrible, let's make it better. So we've got quite a dark shadowy bit down here, so we're going to fill in the shadows by using a little separation light. There we go, so let's turn a separation light on. We'll get it right up against the background. Lovely, I should point it at the back of Jane's hair. And I should put it on its lowest possible power setting. Hopefully, we'll find out. So just a little splash of light. There we go. Okay, that's going to add a little bit of splash of light, but that's a lot of light. That's its lowest power. So what I need to do is to get that light less bright. How can I do that? Any suggestions? Maybe further, further away. Yeah. yeah, we could knock a hole in the wall, put it further away. Um, there's only so far I can move. Uh, when you do corporate work, you end up in the worst places. I did many years ago with my very first corporate gigs with, uh, with uh, Kodak, that ages it, doesn't it? With Kodak, and they said, oh, we've got a studio you can use. 
and it was literally a broom cupboard. They had to take cleaning materials out of the cupboard. <laughs> that was an eye-opener. Uh, so I could do that. What I'm actually going to do is use one of the road flash benders, the large one, and I'm just going to use this just to, to give me a bounce rather than direct flash. So if I don't point the light straight at my subject, then it bounces off a little bit. I'll just give it a bit of a bend so it doesn't just hit the ceiling. Something like that. Okay. Let's find my camera. The reason I use orange cables is I can keep following it until I find where I put my camera down. <laughs> there we go, Jane. Lovely. Okay. So that adds a little bit of fill without being anywhere near as bright. Okay, so that just adds a touch. Now, uh, Jane's got quite a dark eye here, it's sort of zombie eyed on one side. So I need to move my light just a tiny little bit. Jane, it's not you, it's me. Never ever the person sat in front of the camera's fault. Ever. Even when it is, it's always your fault. In this case, it's not your fault, it really is my fault. Okay, so I'll just move my light around just a tiny little bit. And Jane, you can just turn your head slightly towards me. Perfect. There you go. Okay? So we've got a little bit of fill going on one side, uh, but we still have the lit side and the shady side, but we have the most boring black backgrounds. Now, in corporate worlds, that is never a thing. It's usually white backgrounds. And I'll show you how to do a white background in the second half. In, for now, we're going to pop a little light just behind Jane. Now, like Sanjay, I love grids. These are cool. And the grids that come as part of the Flash Bender kit are fantastic. I seriously want to see this white one that Sanjay's been banging on about. You, you've built this up, and we can't see it. So, uh, But I got the black one. Now, the black grids actually come with, uh, with three different grids. There's only actually two bits to it, but you can combine bits of grid together to have a tighter and tighter spot. This is the tightest spot. Did I turn that on? Like, should I turn it on? There's a button on these flashes called Often. If you switch the Often button to On, it makes a massive difference. So that's the Often button. That's Often, not On. That's it. Marvellous. Oh, we better turn it up a little bit in power as well, because otherwise you won't see it. Here we go. Boom. And you still can't see it. Is it even firing? Now it is. Oh, you found a white one. Yeah, the lucky one. <sighs> Brilliant. You can have half sand chain on that bar. That'll be fine. I'll split it in two. <laughs> okay, let's just try that again. Okay, there we go. We're off. Okay, so I can have a little bit of a background light. Now, the reason I like to use the grids is it gives a nice roundness to the light, rather than a square or rectangle. If I was just to use the, the bare flash, it would be the shape of the bare flash, which is rectangular. I don't want to do that in this case. Uh, let's, go, let's go and take this apart. So, so this is the grid. I don't know if you can see at the back, but it's two pieces. You can use one, the other, or both together. If you use them both together, you get a tighter circle. If you use one or the other, you will get a bigger and bigger circle. Now, there's a couple of rules when you do live presentations. One of the rules of live presentations is never use something you've never tried before live. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> so I'm going to go with the 45 degree grid, which is the widest one. It's also a white one. Now, according to the specs, it should give a soft vignetted edge. <laughs> okay, that's fine now. <laughs> it's your product, don't laugh. <laughs> <I'm laughing. laughs> um, yeah, it's actually pretty good. That'll do for me. Okay, so that's the widest grid. Uh, we can try the other one. Let's try the other one. This can use it well. Okay, that's the 45. This is going to be the 25. If you use the two together, what's the two together? About 10? 14. 14. It's quite specific. So uh, it's uh, a tighter and tighter degrees of uh, projection of the circle. Okay, that works well. So let's try this one. This is the, the 25 degree. Here we go. Oh, okay. Well, that works quite nicely. That just puts a nice little circle behind. I've got half my softbox in the shot. And we should do this properly. We'll just elevate that up ever so slightly. Great. Here we go. Boom. Okay, cool. I, I want to adjust my settings a little bit. I'm so fussy. Here we go. Lovely. Okay, so corporate world. I've done my corporate headshot. It's not exciting, but it works. We'll get more exciting as we go through the presentation. Uh, but it works. But at this point, I need to grab my color checker passport again. Once my lighting is set, 
I need, at some point, a reference shot of the passport. And I need to use it with the full colour palette set. Okay? Uh, the reason for that is I want to make sure I get a nicely calibrated profile for my camera and my lighting and the conditions that I'm shooting under. Jane, with this, you need to hold this at the back, like that. Don't put your fingers on the front. Marvellous. And actually, we'll do it wrong first. Oh, let's do that now. Okay, it's going to dangle that bit down, it's kind of heavy. Okay, there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. <clears throat> let's take a close-up shot of this. Okay, this is upside down. <laughs> Can't tell you how many I've done that way up there. Standard. That's test. Is that showing up on the screen? The colours are different, the blues, the reds. Everything is much more accurate with my own colour profile. How long did that take? For me, that seemed like an eternity because I'm in front of you lot. Uh, but it really doesn't take long. Now, once I've done that, I need to make this like a standard. So there's a few other things I might do. For example, I always put noise reduction in, so we might as well make that part of my standard as well. Uh, I usually do some clarity, but we won't. We'll just leave it alone. Uh, so that's going to be my new standard. I'm just going to come to a little drop-down menu here in Camera Raw and choose Save New Camera Raw Defaults. And that is now my saved default. Done. So next time I open up a raw file, for example this one, it'll apply the same settings, so I don't have to. My profile is test, my noise reduction is already applied. Okay, so it's do once and forget, which is lucky because I forget. Any questions at all? Yeah, far away. Is there a specific reason why you convert your specific raw to a DNG file? What are the pros and cons of Okay, so the question is, is there a specific reason I'd go from the DNG file rather than raw? Yeah, it doesn't work the other way around. It actually has to be a DNG file for the software to pick it up. So that's specifically why. Uh, if Sandy does it in Lightroom later or talks about it in Lightroom, Lightroom is a little bit more simple because it automates the process. You don't have to go into the third-party software. Uh, but so the reason why is that's what it's designed to work with. Kind of makes sense. There's so many raw files that have to update the software all the time. Any other questions at all? Yeah. Oh, we'll take two, yeah, that's my first. Um, do you have to do that for each lighting? So every time you actually start a new shoot, you do one of those and then apply that? Really good question. So do I have to do this for every lighting scenario? I don't have to do that full process for every lighting scenario. And we'll talk about that in the second talk. But I will always take a picture of the colour checker passport, A, just in case, and for the other reason that we'll get to later if I can give you a teaser, it's coming. <laughs> and then one more question over there, yes. Oh, right. yay! <laughs> Perfect. Okay, good. So that's fine. That's, that's kind of fun. I like that. That was safe, sensible. Let's see if we can do something a little bit different. Okay, let's turn all these off, move them out of the way. Right. Oh, let's see how we're doing for time. Oh, we're not doing too bad at all. Uh, right, so next thing to do is perhaps something a little bit more dramatic. So I'm going to do a little bit more drama. Uh, Sanjay, where are you? You're taller than me. I've made a, a terrible technical error. <laughs> uh, can you drop that one down a little bit using that? You can just come down about six inches. Marvellous. Now, can you take the top one up? <laughs> I've realised I'm too short to reach my own light stand. <laughs> really embarrassing. Thank you very much. <laughs> According to my in internet profile, I'm six foot. <laughs> Raising myself. That's, that's the weirdest thing, especially when I went over to the States. The, the Americans were lovely, uh, but a few of them have seen me on the internet, and they all said, Hi, it's great to meet you. Wow, you're short. No filter. <laughs> like, am I? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, not that I have a thing about my height. I'm totally fine with it. So, what we're going to do is set a little sort of dramatic lighting up, a little bit more sort of theatrical, and make it a bit more interesting. So, I'm going to get the, uh, the grid. Now, I'm going to swap out to the grid I know works. Not saying that your white one isn't brilliant, but let's swap it out to the one I can trust. Okay, so I'm going to go with the, uh, the 45 degree grid. I'll just attach that to the front. So these grids make a lovely circular beam of light if you project directly onto a background. But nobody says you have to do that. There's no rules in photography. There's suggestions, guidelines, things that you might want to do. But in photography, there's a lot of variables. Do what you like. So I'm going to put a little light that skims across this grey background. Uh, Jane, you can stand up there. That is the least comfortable chair ever, isn't it? 
Ah, marvellous. Okay, let's pop that out of the way. And you'll be standing right up against the background. Marvellous. So we'll do trial and error for the lighting. We'll try and guess this. And that's on C. I'll make sure I turn everything else off because I don't want the other lights to fire. I only want to use a one light scenario. Now the lights I'm using have got a small modeling light built in so I can actually see where they're firing, which is kind of useful. And these lights, although they're bigger and more powerful than speed lights, they still attach to the flash vendors in exactly the same way. Uh, so, Jane, let me just take a little test shot. Here we go. So here's what... Oh, you won't see it because I'm on the wrong damn screen. How we done? There you go. So here's what I'm seeing. A lot more dramatic. Well, this projector is different from my screen. Uh, a little underexposed, a little bit dark, and not that pixelated. This is why you calibrate these things. That's not. Okay, um, and also Jane is a little bit kind of shadowy, but let's see if we can get the light up a bit brighter first, because that's quite underexposed. Okay, Jane, here we go. Oops, that is not going up, that's going down. Sanjay, your problems are catching, because that hasn't changed a jot. Let's see, that should be. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, now it's caught up. Is it in here, do you think? Is it something about the, uh, the I think it's, it's blocking wave, wireless waves. It's not using That's what it is. Okay, that's not up. There you go. Okay, well, that's too bright. That's a relief, because I was starting to worry I'd run out of power there for a minute. Uh, it's a little bit too bright, so one more go and I should get this about right. Here we go, Jane. Great, okay, so that's the sort of exposure I'm after. But Jane is really kind of underexposed and her face is really dark. Now, Sanjay set up other lights to fit in the shadows. I've got another solution. Uh, Jane, can you look up towards the light, but don't look into the light because it really hurts? Okay, <laughs> that's great. No, uh, you look up towards the light. Uh, fantastic, I'm just going to take it a little short. Okay. And if she looks in towards the light, we end up with a much more dramatic shot we can actually see into the eyes. We need to sort your hair out and we lose the jacket because it's horrendous. Thank you very much. Not, it's my jacket, I can say that quite happily. It's not actually my jacket. <laughs> My wife's jacket. <laughs> okay. uh, right, James, so again, if you can look up towards the light, that's better. Great stuff. Here we go. Let's get you in focus. And we'll get a flash of fire. Oh, and that gives a lovely dramatic light. Just by losing the uh, red, I feel we have something that's going better. I'm going to go for a wider shot, James, as well, just so we can see that. So we can move the lights around and end up with really simple but dramatic lighting. I like picking up texture. I like going for a um, little bit more edgy shots. So we've got a lot of texture from this smooth paper. If you just glance light down the side, you can really pick up some of the texture. And it's as simple as that. You don't need to do anything more sometimes than just go with a, a simple effect like that. Any questions? I'll keep asking as we go along. Oh, good. Okay, so that works quite nicely. Um, and the grid is perhaps one of the things I would definitely choose. If I could only choose a couple of bits from the flash vendor range, the grid is in my top two. But my number one thing that I've used the most is not the grid. It's this one right here. Okay? Which is the, the big one. The XL Pro. And this, if I only have one, it'd be this. Now, I've, I've used this way more than I thought I would when I got it. Uh, I'm going to be brutally honest. This is not sexy looking lighting. Okay? You see a lot of photographers who've got the expensive gear and their soft boxes are beautiful. Does that make any difference to what they photograph? No. Because at the end of the day, the bit that counts is what you see through the viewfinder. If the things outside do the job that you need them to do, then that's perfect. This is small, it's pretty indestructible, it fits in my laptop section of my camera bag, and I take it all over the place. If nothing else, it's there just in case I need it. There have been many shoots where I haven't been planning to do anything with lighting, but whilst I'm here, could I? Yeah, I suppose I could. Uh, so this, is, this has proved to be uh, pretty useful, actually. Um, this, this comes in a couple of bits, and we'll look at the other bits in a little bit. Uh, by the way, this, of all the road bits, is not designed for on-camera use. The other flash benders you can use if you do on-camera flash, this one's really designed for off-camera flash, because it is kind of big and a little bit cumbersome. I don't think I want to walk around doing an event. You probably could, but I would suggest this is really aimed at off-camera use. Okay, let's untwist that. Tricky to do in the dark, but I'm there. 
Bear with me, I'll reattach it. So it attaches on using Velcro, and it just goes on nice and firm, like so. Uh, right, so that's kind of fun. Uh, that's what we're going to use, but we're going to use it in a, a different kind of way. We'll make sure that Jane stayed roughly in the same place. We'll try and change as little as I can during this. And we'll bring this up a little bit more close like this. Now, uh, this is the softbox variant. It has a little kind of velcroed on softbox edge, uh, which helps us to give a little bit more diffusion to the light. Okay, it takes down some of these specular highlights uh, that you might get. Uh, the projector won't help us on that one, or these might my setup won't help us today. But here we go, Jane, you're going to look towards me. Lovely. Oh, there we go. So we have quite a nice little setup there. It works quite well. It gives soft light in as much as the shadow. I have no idea. Uh, the shadow here on the nose is reasonably soft. Okay, absolutely fine on my screen. Um, that's okay, but it's not very dramatic. It's not very exciting. We can do a little bit more exciting by changing the light modifier slightly. <coughs> so these things actually peel off. Comes off. Like that. Sounds good, doesn't it? You tear it off. And I can replace that with this, which is a little egg crate grid strip box. So it's uh, a part of the system, it's designed specifically for the XL. Do you know how much extra this costs? Peter, how much is it? No idea. It's nothing, it's free, it's included in the box. <laughs> was a bit, I, I built you up there, big opportunity. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, it's the technical. Okay, so it's actually included in the box, so it's like bonus. You can have it either as a soft box or a little strip box. Okay, and strip boxes are kind of fun. I like using strip boxes. Okay, that's great. A. Because they give more direction to the light. You've got quite a sort of bright area over here. I could darken that down in post-processing, I really could. Uh, but sometimes it's way better to do it actually in camera. So let's just make sure I've got all the other lights turned off. Just that one on, mode. There we go, okay. And we do a little test shot again. So I'm going to do trial and error, just to see, whoop, that is a little bit on the dark side. Not too bad. But hopefully you can get the impression that this area is darker. So the only thing I'd moved or changed was a normal soft box to a strip box. The strip box gives a much more direction to this. And uh, make sure that I end up with a lit side and a shady side. Uh, it's perhaps just a tiny bit underexposed for my liking. Here we go, Jane. Marvellous. Okay. And that's perhaps just a little bit brighter. But as photographers, we suffer from a few mistakes, a few things that we, we do wrong. One of the things we do wrong is we don't move our feet. Lead feet syndrome. I don't care what you shoot, you'll suffer from that at some point. If you're a landscape photographer, you just think, I can't do better than this spot. I'll take the same picture ten times. Well done. I get the same thing in the portrait studio. I just think, I really, I can't do better than this. I can zoom in, I can ask the model to move around. But sometimes you need to get rid of the lead feet syndrome and move yourself about. So, let's move myself about. Let's see how far my little tether cable will stretch before my that falls off. Oh, we're going to be okay. Uh, you're going to look straight ahead for me, okay? Here we go. Boom. So if I move round, I get a completely different picture. Light hasn't moved, I've moved. In effect, the light's moved. The background. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll work on this in the second presentation. Um, the background is, from where I'm looking, a bunch of PA equipment. But because of how flash works, because of how light works, remember that first shot, no flash, no picture? We've managed to get rid of the ambient light, so anywhere where the light doesn't fall, effectively goes near enough black. Uh, so that works really nicely, it gives a very dramatic uh, edge light. But of course I can move it once. Let's move this in front of you, there we go. Awesome. So we'll move that right there, and uh, you're going to look into the lights this time. Okay. I'm going to go for a slightly wider shot. If I go for a slightly wider shot, so this time we get a little bit more, a little bit more of the background coming in. Why have I got more of the background coming in? 
You're not asleep. I'm amazed. Well done. Yeah, because I moved the light round. Before it was angled towards me, now it's ever slightly angled away from me. Okay, so uh, we could fix that by moving everything around. Uh, we could dismantle the PA equipment, that's an option. I've got a hammer in the car, we could try that. Uh, or we could just sort of uh, move things around slightly. Sanjay, you go and hold that cable so I don't pull my laptop off. Yeah, this is the downside of cables, so I get tangled. Okay, here we go. Let's come around the other side where the background isn't as messy. I'll just get you in focus, bear with me. Okay, ooh, there we go. <laughs> Your screen is so different to mine. Okay, um, but that kind of works okay. I can go that way and fix it that way as well. So that's okay, I like that. There is a slight problem. If you've ever modeled, and I, I strongly recommend photographers go and sit or stand where you ask your subjects to go and sit and stand because it makes for a whole new world of experience. You can honestly empathize with people if you sit and do what they have to do. You, you have a new respect for them immediately. But if you ask someone to look into a light, it becomes quite uncomfortable. I mean, Jane's a professional. She will stand and look at that light all day as I slowly blind her. Uh, I'm gonna need some sunglasses, Jane, okay? Because it's much nicer if you give someone some sunglasses. And it gives them something to play with, something to interact with. I'm going to move that like back around there so I end up with a slightly more edgy look. Marvellous. You're going to be looking straight ahead. Okay, that's awesome. Fantastic. So if I give Jane some sunglasses, immediately we have a different look and feel, and now she's less blinded than she was before. And Jane can interact and so can actually do some modelling. Okay, do you want to move the sunglasses around? Bring your hands up to the sunglasses, Jane. That's great. Awesome. Wider. Uh, Jane, can I flip your hair back behind your head? Thank you very much. That's all right. That's fantastic. Last one. Here we go. Straight ahead. It's going to get you in focus. Boom. Okay. Okay, so sunglasses are one of the props I use, and we'll, we'll talk more about props in the second half. Um, that's kind of cool. Uh, so I've got exactly. What time was I supposed to finish? 10 minutes. Plans, that's alright. Okay, uh, so 10 minutes is good. So I've got what I want to do. We've got a little bit of editing to do, so I promised you a touch of editing. So I thought we'd finish with a little bit of a complete workflow. I'll just check before I dive in. Is there any questions about what I've just done so far? Other than why do my picture look so odd? Come and see my laptop if you get a chance. Okay, cool. Um, so I've got a bit of editing to do, and I've done some preparation. It does astound people when I tell them that I've planned some of this. Like, really? You planned it? Yeah. <laughs> so I've got a background. So this is the background I want to pop Jane onto. Here we go. So what I did was I went to the local Ikea store and photographed that I didn't. <laughs> but it has that feeling of sort of like, have you been to Ikea, there were those lights and things set up? You think that would be awesome. Um, I could afford one. It's not, it's not easy being a photographer, times are tough. So I afforded one light bulb and then I did a bit of Photoshop just to, to, to copy the light bulb over and over again and then flip it and copy it the other side. Uh, I couldn't bring it today for one really good reason. Uh, I actually did the wiring for this. I'm not a qualified electrician. Uh, that is never going to pass anybody's pat test, is it? <laughs> and, uh, you know, Jane, she, she needs to work for a living, so I can't really electrocute her because it's just not on. That's one of the, the unwritten things of, of working with models is don't electrocute them. That's, no one ever says that, but don't do that. Uh, so um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to bring Jane into this scene. So I need to light Jane as if she was being lit by this light bulb. So we need a sort of elevated light source. Um, and another thing you need, you need a sand jelly for this as well. So it's, it's going to come in dead handy. Uh, also, we need a chair. Okay, Jane, here we go. Let's give you a chair. So I'm going to pop this right up into the background. Lovely. Can you just face me first of all? <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you sit on the chair. I mean, you can stand on it if you like, but, uh, but I think sitting probably safer on balance. Uh, so uh, we've got Jane sat down on a chair, now I need to light her. So where's the light coming from for this shot? Straight overhead. So where do I need to put my light? Straight overhead. Now I would recommend using a boom arm for this. Guess what I left in my studio? Yeah, that's the boom arm behind. But, if you've got a sand jelly, you'll be sorted. <laughs> you know, 
Uh, one of the great things about the, the, the flash bender range is they are really, really light. They don't weigh anything. The heaviest thing by far is the flash itself. Sanjay's a fit young guy, he can do this. He can actually hold this light right over the top, like that, and he can be a boomer. Okay. There you go, Sanjay. That's all yours, don't drop it. The road flash bender won't break, but my light will. Directly above. Directly above, yeah. Okay. One of the downsides is I can't angle it like I would have. There we go, marvellous. So again, we're going to do trial and error for the, the metering and the exposure. So let's do a little trial and error set. Okay, and trial and error, all you need to see, of course. That's moody. It's a little bit dark. I'll take the power up slightly. And Sanjay, what we're going to do is we're going to angle that a little bit so we catch a little bit of light. So my lights again have a little modeling light built in so I can see, and Sanjay can see, just a touch of light hitting there, and you're going to bring a little bit forward for me as well. So we get a little bit of light from Jane's face. Marvellous. Okay. Here we go, Jane. Okay. That's getting better. Pretty good. Um, but we can make this even better. Jane, can you turn and face the lovely audience? Give them a wave. <laughs> Don't have to, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, what you're going to do, Jane, is you're going to look straight up into the light. Okay, so you need to head back, that's exactly it, look up into the light, let me get you in focus. Um, we're trying to minimise the amount of Sanjay in this picture. It's nothing personal, Sanjay, you're just not the subject of this shot. Okay, Okay. so Jane's looking up into the light. Brilliant, well done, thank you very much. Um, whilst you're there, can you just confirm it looks better on that one? It certainly does. <laughs> okay, that's good. Marvellous. So we need to get that uh, sorted out and popped into the background. So uh, I need to take that picture and do a little bit of editing. Let's grab the shot. And I've got five minutes. No problem. Okie dokie. So I'm going to go grab my raw file. Now remember, when I did my, my colour check and passport shot, okay, I don't have to do anything. I've already done that. The lighting that I'm shooting this in is the same lighting, same background, same flash, same subject, same lens. Everything is the same. So when I set my profile to test, it's still there as test. I know I'm getting the very best out of my equipment. So then all I need to do is nothing. I, I could soften it down. Let, let's just take the, the clarity down slightly. There we go. Clarity down. That'll do. Uh, we'll then open that up into Photoshop. So bring this into Photoshop. Here it comes. Marvellous. Uh, now I've brought it into Photoshop, uh, I need to then pop Jane onto the other picture. So I will go for Select and All, Edit and Copy. Jump back into my other template. Now this is a template I built for myself. So I actually made this out of layers. And the people in the front row might spot something on the layers that makes my life a little bit easier. Can you tell I'm over 45? Okay. Well, I, I put my picture here. <laughs> Your picture here, yeah. Edit and paste, that's where it's going to go. Okay, so I put Jane in there. Uh, now, there's clearly a difference in size between Jane and the light bulb. So let's see if we can just do a little bit of resizing. So I'm going to use a bit of uh, edit and free transform, and I'll just shrink Jane down. Okay, because she needs to be, well, not necessarily proportional. This is, in my mind, a bit of a fine art, fine art type print. I'm saying that cautiously because Sanjo is a judge. I have a thing with judges. <laughs> um, so it's, it's sort of semi-fine art, let's call it that. So it's not necessarily that it needs to be the right size, it just needs to look and feel about right. Uh, I've got now not enough room to fill the, the screen with background, so I'm going to use a quick selection and a bit of free transform just to make this a little bit bigger. Free transform, let's grab that one. Whoops. Get it. Make it larger. There you go. It doesn't have to completely fill the screen. It just needs to be a little bit bigger. I'll speed it up using keyboard shortcuts, Control T or Command T on a Mac for free transform. I can stretch this out, and we need to do the back as well. Last bit. Free transform. Stretch that out. So I've made my grey background much larger than it was before. Okay, that will do nicely. But I've covered up the light bulbs. Well, it's going to get worse before it gets better, because now I'm going to apply a layer mask. Layer, layer mask, hide all, and I'm right back where I started. That was a waste of time then, wasn't it? But it wasn't. What I've done is I've put a little black rectangle here. This is a mask, just covering that layer. All I need then is a paintbrush. I get my opposite 
colour to black, which is the colour of the mask, which is white. Get a really big brush. Jane's about here somewhere, so if I click once, I can bring her back into the scene. And because we set the light up carefully, it works. She just appears in the picture. Okay, so maybe we'll just bring a little bit to the light up there. Okay, so now it looks like she's looking at the light bulb without having to do any dangerous kind of light bulb work. Now, this is a template, so I designed this because I didn't know how this was going to go, what sort of background uh, I might end up with and things like that. So I've got um, a little home from home. I've got my wall, that's the wall of my studio, so I can pop that into the scene. And because some of you are trendy types on Instagram and what have you, uh, let's do something a little Instagram-y. We can warm it up. Okay, we can have a sort of warm tone filter. Okay, and I can just maybe just drop the opacity down with a slightly sort of warm wall. The opacity of the filter, that would help. Okay, we can just add a little bit of warm in there. Uh, we can sort of wash the colours out, which is very trendy, have washed out looks. We can cool it down. Uh, Sanjay, you're a judge. What should I do? Warm it up. Oh, sorry, really? Warm it up? <laughs> That's the thing about judges, isn't it? I've like, got opinions. You're supposed to be more on the fence. Oh, no, you're a, no, you're a judge. That's fine. That's having a strong opinion. That's why I can't do judging. I'm kind of like, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Um, and you could just wash that out a tiny little bit, but again, I can just drop that down, just have something in between. There you go, a little bit of fine art printing, well, photography. Uh, it would make for a gorgeous fine art print. Most of my stuff goes online, so that's where I tend to leave everything. But if you want to do printing, go have a look at the Epson guys over there, uh, who will talk you through printing and everything that's about it, because that's not something I do, um, they do. However, when I do make prints, I'm always blown away by how they look. So I'm kind of like, I should print more, I really should. Are there any questions at all? Other than, when do we get lunch? <laughs> About a minute. Okay, so, um, Jane's kind of done for the day, well, he's done for the, the morning. I will try and set something up uh, during lunch. You may pop back in and we'll just leave something set up. But uh, we're going to be doing more this afternoon. Next up is Sanjay doing something way more awesome than me. Uh, and if you're here at the end, we'll be taking this to the next level. So join me after uh, Sanjay and we'll continue where we, we got to here. So thank you very much for sticking around. Let's go get some lunch.